Hi everyone, welcome to another video on this what the hack serverless hack video series. I'm your host, Gwen, cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. And let's dive into challenge number four, configuration. As a prereq, you need to make sure you have challenge three. So go ahead and get that done. There's a video for that as well. So it says here that in this challenge, you will apply application settings using the Microsoft Azure portal. You will then add the application settings to the Tollbooth starter project. So it looks like we need to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 uh, key value pairs to our Azure function, the one that we added app into it. So that would be our toll booth app. So I'm going to actually go back to my resource group and then we'll get to the function that way. So here's our resource group. I'm going to click on toll booth app. And on the left side, I'm going to click configuration because this is where we would add all these settings. So I'm going to send that over there to have more space. And I'm going to hit new application setting. Another thing I need to have open actually is my key vault. I already have another tab open, but if you don't, go ahead and open that. And then we need to grab these values in here. So let's start with blob storage. Actually, let's go in this, uh, let's go in order. That tells us first to add computer vision API URL. So let's go to our tool booth and then we're going to paste that in there and we need the value. So it says here, computer vision API endpoint you copied earlier, and then we append this to the end. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually, let's open up, uh, let's go back here. Let's go back here and we're going to open up the resource group in another tab. Alrighty. And we need to go to that computer vision resource. Awesome. On the left side, we need just the endpoint. We'll copy that. Then we'll go to tool booth app. We'll paste this in here and it tells us we need to append something here. Uh, this at the very end. Alrighty. And then we hit, okay. Awesome. So we've got that first one done. Computer vision API key. And this is referencing a secret that we have in key vault. So here things become a little different because now we go into our key vault secrets and then computer vision API key. We'll click on the most recent version. And we have this secret identifier, which we need, but we need to format this correctly. So what I'm going to do is actually just paste this in here. But we need to append and add something at the end as well. Uh, there's this documentation linked at the bottom that tells us how to use Key Vault references with App Service, which is what Azure Functions uses. So it tells us that we need to start it off with this here. And then we follow by our Key Vault secret URL. So we'll go back to Tool Booth here. We'll paste it in here at the beginning. And then you see there's a parentheses here. We'll have to add that to the very end as well. And then we'll just do that. And then we'll hit OK. Then we'll just hit Save. Continue. And awesome. So then we have event grid topic endpoint. That doesn't look like it's a key vault reference. So we'll add another one. Back to our resource group. We can go in here. We'll go overview. We'll go to our research group, and then we need to get that endpoint uh, event grid topic. And then on the left side, we have access keys. Actually, it might be in here. Here's our endpoint, so we'll just copy that. Awesome. Paste that in here. We'll hit OK. We'll add, we'll hit save after each one, because I get a little paranoid that it might get erased. Awesome. So then it tells us we need event grid topic key, and that is going to be a key vault reference. So we'll go back here, we'll hit plus, and then again, we'll follow that same format. We'll type it, paste in the Microsoft dot key, that at Microsoft dot key vault, open parentheses, secret URI equals, and then we'll go into the key vault and then we'll go into the secrets and then we need event grid topic key, select the latest version and we'll copy that uh, value here. And then we'll just close paren, then hit okay. Then we hit save. So if you are formatting your key vault references correctly, on the right, right side, you'll see something that says source, and you'll see a little green check mark that says key vault reference. So make sure that's correct for you. This is only for the ones that are actually referencing key vault. Keep that in mind. All right, so Cosmos DB endpoint URL. Let's go ahead and add that as well. I'm going to hit plus. And same thing, let's head into our Cosmos DB account. We'll scroll down here. And our endpoint is right here under URI under overview. And we'll just paste that in here. We'll hit OK. 
and we'll hit save once more, then we'll hit continue. Fantastic. Now we need Cosmos DB authorization key. Awesome. Let's go back into here. We'll hit new application setting. And then this is again a key vault reference. So we'll have to add that prefix here, which is that Microsoft here. And then I could also add a paren there and then just paste it in the middle. So we'll go to our key vault secrets. Uh, where is it? Authorization key for Cosmos DB. Copy that value. And now let us go to the toll booth here and just make sure we are pasting it in correctly. Awesome. Okay. Then we'll hit save. Then we'll hit continue. Fantastic. Next, we have Cosmos DB database ID, which looks like it's just a value of license plate and processed. Uh, all right. Awesome. So we'll go back to toll booth. We'll hit new. And then we'll paste this in here and it's license plate. Paste that there. Okay. The next one is whoop, over here. Cosmos DB collection ID. Add new collection ID is processed. Awesome. We'll save that in here. We'll hit okay. And then we need export CSV container name, which is export. Okay. New application setting, and then this is just export. Awesome. And then we'll hit save once more. And then we have blob storage connection, which is a key vault reference. Alrighty. New application setting. And then again, we have to add that prefix. Uh, here we go. Where is it? Right there. And we'll go to our secrets once more. Blob storage connection. Copy that URL back into toll booth. Paste that in here. Make sure to close paren, hit save, and then hit continue. Alrighty, so in total we should have one, two, three, four key vault references. One, two, three, and then the last one that we just added, which should probably take a second to update in here. Um, okay, so we have got everything added into our Azure portal for our function app when it's deployed and working in production. It can't pull these secrets locally but it will pull these secrets from this configuration setting here. Uh, awesome. Okay. So now what it's telling us, it says open the toll booth folder in Visual Studio Code already. So let's go ahead and do that. Got my terminal here and I'm already in the toll booth folder. So just make sure you move into that. And then I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. All right. What else does it tell us? Open the to-do tree extension. On the left side, I have to-dos. Uh, and it looks like we need to do some restoring. So let's actually do that first. Okay, this is a great part of a hack is it doesn't tell you absolutely everything that you need to do, but it sort of just gives you an idea and hints. I got a bunch of problems here and most likely this is because I downloaded the code, but I didn't download all the packages which are defined in the .cs proj. So as long as I'm in the same directory where my CS proj is, I can do .NET restore and this should download absolutely everything that the .cs proj, which is the file in .NET that uh, tells you all the packages that it needs, right? So for example, if I open that up here, it tells us that we need CSV helper, this version, document db.core, this version. And so that command will restore everything for us. And it looks like the majority of our errors have left. We just have uh, more so a cautionary one, but no red errors. So this should compile, but let's follow those steps that uh, the challenge is telling us. It tells us here to open process image.cs under the to do tree extension. So that would be process this one here. And we have one to do here. And it says here that notice that the run method is decorated with the function name attribute, which sets the name of the Azure function to process image. So that means this attribute here at the top, meaning the name of this function is process image. Awesome. This is triggered by HTTP requests sent to it from event grid service. You tell event grid that you want to get these notifications at your functions URL by creating an event subscription, which you will do later in a later task uh, in which you subscribe to blob created events. The events, the functions trigger watches for new blobs being added to the images container of the storage account that was created in exercise one. The data passed to the function from the event grid notification includes the URL of the blob. 
the, the URL in turn is passed to the input binding to obtain the uploaded images from blob storage. All right, cool. So that gives us a brief explanation of what's going on here. So now it says four, the following code represents the completed task in process.cs. So we have to copy this line of code under that to do number one. So let's click on that to do number one. And here it tells us we have to complete this line. So we can just erase this here, paste this in here. Awesome. Perfect. Let's close this so that's all set. Now it tells us open find license plate text.cs. So we'll open that up here, find license plate text.cs. Here we go. And it tells us here, this class is responsible for contacting the computer vision API to find and extract the license plate text from the photo using OCR. Notice that this class also shows how you can implement a resilience pattern using poly, an open source.NET library that helps you handle transient errors. This is useful for ensuring that you do not overload downstream services. In this case, the computer vision API. This will be demonstrated later on when visualizing the function's scalability. Cool. Uh, so the following code represents the completed tasks in find license plate ta find, find license plate text.cs. So we need to copy these two. Back to Visual Studio Code. Ah, looks like I've already added these in, but you would probably have this empty and then you would paste in those there. Or they have like empty double double quotes here. So you delete those and then paste in the right values. So you can see that, you know, it tells us environment.get environment variable computer vision API URL. These correspond to those application settings that we added in the portal before doing this, right? So you have to make sure those match. Awesome. So save, and then it tells us to open send to event grid.cs under the to do extension as well. So send to grid here, and it looks like we have two, we have to do three and to do four in here. So let's open this up here. This class is responsible for sending an event to the event grid topic, including the event type and license plate data. Event listeners will use the event type to filter and act on the events they need to process. Make note of the event types defined here, the first parameter passed into the send method, as they will be used later on when creating new functions in the second function app you've provisioned earlier. So that toll booth events function that we created. Okay, so now the following code represents the completed tasks in send to event grid.cs. Awesome. So we'll copy that. And then we'll erase this complete here. Fantastic. And then we'll go in here and we'll copy that to do number four, a piece of code there as well. And there we go. So remember it, it told us to, uh, where did it say here? Make note of the event types defined here, the parameters passed into the send method. So that would be these values in here. Awesome. So now it tells us, the function, the solution successfully builds. The function app does not show any errors. Okay, so we can just go in here and make sure we're in our terminal. And let's clear this. And I should be able to do .NET build. And let's see if we get any errors or, nope, build succeeded, awesome. So success criteria there has been met. And it tells us it builds successfully. The function app does not show any errors. So that would be up here. We'll go into the function app itself and we'll go in here. And then in our overview, we don't really see any errors. I'm gonna click on the URL here and it says the app is running properly. So we have met the success criteria for this step here. And next we get to deploy things. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one on this what the heck serverless hack video series.